Hello guys, my name is Avi and I'm a medical student studying in London. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some of my Anki add-ons. Before I get started, quick little disclaimers. First one is that these are just the add-ons that I use and I find helpful. I'll be showing you what each one does so you can see if, you know, it'll be beneficial for you or not. And the other thing is some of these add-ons are paid, but I'll be showing you what each add-on does and then you can decide whether it's worth it for you, whether you use that feature or not. So this is my add-ons, um, my Anki screen even. So let me show you the add-ons. So these are the add-ons I have installed. There are quite a few, so this video might be long, so feel free to skip around. The first one is Anki Simulator. So what this lets you do is basically sim for a particular deck, it will show you how long it will take for you to finish that deck. So say for example, my year four deck, if I do 50 new cards a day and I have learning steps of five minutes, and 15 minutes this add-on doesn't like decimals for some point so you just have to get rid of the decimal point and let's say i want to call this my year four simulation i click simulate oh what's going on there that looks weird oh okay i've set maximum reviews to 10. let's set maximum reviews to unlimited well, that looks a bit more realistic so this shows me that if i do 50 new cards and all the reviews every day i'll peak at around january the 12th or january the 15th with around 430 of nine cards or january the 13th with 439 cards and then my reviews will gradually go down each day so this tells you how many reviews you have to do each day and so you can plan to see how long a particular deck will take for you to finish pretty handy this is one of the paid add-ons next up we have better search okay better search what this basically lets you do is you know in the browse when you're looking for your cards um i don't think these options are over here i don't even use these options basically the reason i use this is to give me a larger search field when i'm typing my um thing here so for example if i wanted to go into year five psych deck and wanted to find something about i don't know let's just go for anxiety there we go and then i can just search it basically gives you a bigger search field. There are there are other things you can do as well, such as, you know, advanced filters and all this stuff. I don't actually use those. The only reason I've got the add-on is to give me a bigger search field. Okay, the next one is Close Overlapper. Let me actually show you a Close Overlapped card and then it will make more sense. So I think the Pancreatitis one. So for example, Causes of Acute Pancreatitis. I've listed them out here. So these are goods for learning lists. As you have in medical school, you've got loads of lists you need to learn. Like causes of things. So for example, Causes of Acute Pancreatitis. I can just list them out. And what this add-on will do is display them one by one as closed cards. For example, this is one card. This is asking me the, what's the first cause of acute pancreatitis. And I can go ahead and press the OK button and it will tell me idiopathic. That's using the I get smashed um, acronym, mnemonic, whatever it's called. And then it'll, each card will come as a separate close and it will give you the previous card just as a reminder. So for example, my next card might be this. So it would tell me the previous card, idiopathic, and it will get me to guess the next step. So this add-on is useful for remembering lists and mnemonics and stuff. Pretty handy. Okay, so the next one is customized keyboard shortcuts. Like the name says, this basically lets you customize your keyboard shortcuts. And obviously, if you're using Anki a lot, if you're using it every day like I do, then it's useful to have your own keyboard shortcuts. Having said that, I actually use the default keyboard shortcuts. And the only one I've changed is the one which is related to the rememorize add-on, which I'll come on to later. But if you're unhappy with a particular shortcut or if you do a particular action often, for example, if you have voice notes or something i don't use voice notes but if you do something often i'm pretty sure keyboard shortcuts will let you change the keyboard shortcut for that particular thing so pretty handy next we've got customized sidebar i can't actually remember what this does oh okay actually this is very very useful so on the sidebar you'll see you've got flags i don't think this comes on a standard so if I click on a particular flag, it will show me all the cards with that flag. So I'm clicking on red, it will show me all the red flagged cards. Same with orange, same with green. And it also show you that cards that you've added today. It will show you the cards that you've studied today. It will show you the cards that you've pressed again on. It also adds a leech. 
So if you press again, uh, if you get a card wrong many times, it will flag it as leech and you can set the threshold for leech and all your leech cards will go here. So then you can actually see things you're getting wrong. You know, maybe you need to relearn it. Maybe you need to make a new card or whatever, but it will come under leached once it meets that certain leached threshold. So these options, these today, flags, leech and stuff, they're not normally there. This is the add-on that gives you those options on your browse menu. So that's pretty handy to have. And the next one is called God Mode Faster Shortcuts and Close Switching. Mouthful, but here we go. Basically what this lets you do, if I can remember. Oh yes, I remember. So basically when you're making a new card, let's say I'm making a new card in the year four deck. Oh, hopefully I'll remember to delete this later because it's going to be a rubbish card. So imagine you wanted to create a closed card out of this sentence. The Prime Minister of UK is Boris Johnson. Essentially, instead of having to go ahead and change the card type every single time you want to switch from a basic to a closed card, you can keep staying on basic and select the part you want to close and apply the close field. You can even do multiple close fields, to be honest. You can say the what of the UK is Boris Johnson and then the Prime Minister of UK is what. So now I've got two close fields applied. Even though I'm still on basic, when I enter to create that card, it will automatically convert it into a closed card and add those two separate closed cards for you without you having to go ahead and change the type every single time. So if you're like me and you alternate between basic and closed cards quite often, then it's handy to have the shortcut so you don't have to go and change your type every single time. Okay, so the next add-on is Hierarchical Tags 2. This is actually very useful. It neatens up your browser field. So here, for example, I've got my Year 5 deck and within the Year 5 deck, I've got different chapters that I'm studying. When I create a card, I can tag it. For example, COOP, that stands for Care of the Elderly Person care of the older person module. What I can do is I can tag it using my year five deck separated by two semi -co two colons and the name of the sub deck. And if I tag my cards in this format, the add-on hierarchical tags two will automatically group these add-ons in the sidebar for me. So all my year five coop, year five history, year five MSC, all of them are grouped into this year five bundle here. And similarly with my year four, I've got year four acute, year four CPP, and I've just tagged them, you separated by the two colons in the middle. So that's a pretty good way to organize your cards. Okay, so the next add-on I'm gonna be talking about is image occlusion enhanced for Anki 21 Alpha. Again, such a mouthful. But anyway, so what this add-on lets you do is, let me show you an example of an image occluded card and it will make a little bit more sense. So this is my Circle of Willis image occluded card. Essentially, if you're learning anatomy or if you're learning things with diagrams with labels on, you can use this add-on to block off certain parts of the diagram and then the red bit will present it to you as a card. So if I press next, it will tell me, oh, okay, that's the posture communicating artery. Okay, the next add-on is PDF glossary, uh, glossary, glossary explorer, exporter, if I can even speak. So basically what this lets you do is export one of your decks as a PDF or HTML. Very useful if you want to print your deck out or for learn for revision purposes or whatever. So essentially the way you do that is, for example, if I want to export my ophthalmology deck, I can click on the settings tool, click export, and it will give me different options. Here I can select say PDF, HTML or so on. So for example, I'm gonna do HTML, one column HTML, or you could do two column and then click export. And then I can just save it wherever I want to. And there you go, all my cards have been exported and now this is now a HTML file with all my cards. So I can print this out or I can you know, if it was a PDF, I could annotate it or whatever. So that's useful if you want to export all your cards in HTML or PDF format. So this next add-on is pop-up dictionary. This is actually a very useful add-on. I use it all the time. So for example, imagine if I'm studying a card and I want to quickly look something up. What this add-on allows me to do is I can double click and any other card that's mentioned this particular word, it will show it to me in a little pop-up. So I wanted to learn a bit more about penicillins and I remember one of my card had something on it but I can't remember which card and I can't be asked to go in the browse type penicillin all that stuff. You just double click it and I can browse all my cards which has that keyword. Similarly if I wanted to see any instances of coamoxiclav you can just click on that double click it 
Okay, just selected a Moxiclav anyway. And then every other card which has that will be shown in my pop-up thing over here. It's pretty handy when reviewing things when you know you've got another card related to that topic and you can't remember or if there's a definition that you forgot and you knew another card had it so you can just double click on it and it will show you all the cards with that keyword. Very very handy. Oops, I accidentally closed down key. Let me reopen it. Okay, the next one is rememorize rescheduler with it's a mouthful, okay? It's basically rememorize. Basically, what this card lets you do is let's say if you're studying a card and it tells you, okay, if you press good, it will show the card in 2.2 months, but you're not quite ready, you think you'll forget it in 2.2 mo months, you can activate this add on and you can reschedule when you want to see that card. So, for example, if I want to see that card again in seven days, then I can just type in seven, click OK, and it will show me that card in seven days. So it will basically reschedule it. And there are different options with this add-on. You can reschedule it without affecting the original timing behind it if you don't want to mess up the algorithm. Or, you know, if you're revising for a particular exam, you can put a date so you see that card on that date before your exam and so on and so forth. But I basically just stick to the basics, just enter a day that I want to um, re-see the card. If I think the options that are showing me is a bit too long. Oh, and I did mention I'll talk about this earlier. So for this card, for this add-on to work with the keyboard shortcut R when you're reviewing, you'll have to go ahead into customize keyboard shortcuts and set one of the thing that's already set to R and change it to something else. I can't remember what it is, but if you go into your customized keyboard shortcuts, click on config, find the one which has which is set to just R, the shortcut R, change it to whatever else you want, and then that way this um, rememorize add-on will work when you press R while you're reviewing. Otherwise you run into some problems. That's one of the only reasons why I have this uh, customized keyboard shortcuts add-on to make sure it works with this. Okay, so the next one is resize images in editor. This is quite handy. It basically does what it says on the tin. For example, here's a nice picture of a grade one pressure ulcer. If I want to just change the size of the image, I can just do that in the editor, as the add-on says. Pretty handy, because normally when you paste into um, Anki, it doesn't let you change the uh, shiz, shiz, size of the image. So this add-on is quite handy and lets you do that. Next, we've got review heat map. This is basically what you see on the front here. It tells you how many days you've studied it. So I'm, I've currently got an 82 day streak. So hopefully I don't break that. Um, and then it will tell you how many cards on average you learn. You can change the different colors on it. it basically just keeps me motivated because it makes me not want to break my streak. That's the main reason I have it basically. So the next one is tag selector V2. I'm not gonna lie, I completely forgot what this does. Oh yes, I, I did have to Google, but I now remember this is actually quite useful. Basically when you're adding a card, you see this thing at the bottom. It basically quickly lets you select tags to apply to your cards. Because Anki doesn't save the card you already, and the tags you already used, it can be a pain to keep retyping the tags. So if I was creating, you know, psych deck, I can just quickly check this button here and it will add that tag for me. I can also add multiple tags, so on and so forth. And I can obviously customize which tags I want here or how many. And But yeah, it's pretty handy if you're making a, a deck of particular tag and you don't want to have to keep retyping that name of that tag over and over again. Last but not least, we've got two retention. Basically what this does is in your stats, you can go ahead and see this. It adds this little bit to your stats and it basically gives you a true your true retention because apparently the retention in this Anki stats isn't accurate and so you should aim for this number to be between 80 and 90 apparently so if mine is 94 means my cards are too easy and I need to you know either space it out or basically make more hard cards. It basically just adds this little section now don't worry about anything else I literally just look at this true retention number it should be between 80 and 90 if it's below 80, that means your cards are too hard. If it's above 90, it means your cards are too easy. Simple as. Okay, so yeah, I think I went through all of the add-ons. This is just some of the add-ons that I have. There are hundreds of thousands of add-ons out there. So if you do know any good, any better add-ons or any decent add-ons that you use, then feel free to also comment down in the comment section below. Help me and help everyone else out who checks the comments too. And obviously, if you like the video and all that stuff, then make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, all that jazz. With that being said, thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in my next video.